Before there was Halo. Before Myth, the Fallen Lords. Before Marathon. It was 1993, a year after Wolfenstein 3D had taken the world by storm. Bungie planned to follow suit and make a killer game for their underappreciated Mac gamers. It was do or die time, and Bungie did not disappoint. The game was Pathways into Darkness. This is an in-depth playthrough of Bungie's first big hit, featuring strategies, lore, secrets, and more. Join me on this adventure. This first video will cover basic info, how to play the game in 2021, past versions of the game, and a bit about the developers. If you aren't interested in this information, feel free to skip to the next video, which will cover the story from the manual. What is Pathways into Darkness? Pathways into Darkness took inspiration from Wolfenstein 3D, but it was on the Mac and featured new technology. The game had story and puzzles, some mixture of a first-person shooter and adventure game. Bungie showed off their new shadow technology. In PID, short for Pathways into Darkness, we take control of an American soldier who will fight his way through a pyramid against strange creatures. This pyramid has mysteriously appeared within the jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula. The soldier's task? To save the world from a sleeping god deep in the earth under the pyramid. How will he do it? By carrying a nuke to the base of the pyramid and blowing it up. Our task is dangerous, but we are ready. How can we play the game today? The easiest way to play Pathways into Darkness today is to download the Mac version of the game for free on OS X. Shout out to Mark Levin and Bruce Morrison of Man Up Studios for creating this version. If, however, you are like me and don't have a Mac, you are still at luck. The game has been ported to Aleph 1, which is an open source continuation of the game engine for Marathon 2, a future Bungie game. Note that this version can also be played on the Mac. Huge thanks to Work Kakenter for his port, as well as answering some difficult questions I had about the game. Please go and subscribe to his YouTube channel where he shows off his skills and discusses his work on the game. The Mac versions of the PID featured multiple windows to control your equipment, stats, and messages. These were removed in the LF1 port of the game, yet the LF1 port holds very true to the original game with only minor differences. I will be using the LF1 port for these videos as the full screen view will make these videos more entertaining. There is also the Pathways Redux mod for Doom 3, but this mod does not hold true to the original game and I have not tried it yet. What about the original versions of the game? The original release version of this game was version 1.1. There was also version 1.0, but this version was only sold at Boston Macworld on August 3rd, 1993, where about 350 of 500 copies were sold. I guess that Bungie had some quick fixes after that. On the following year, Bungie released version 2.0. This version added ceiling and floor textures and could run at over 30 frames per second. The purpose of this version was to take advantage of Macintosh's new power PC technology. There are actually two different demos out there for PID. Version A1 came out on July 7th, 1993 and was the original demo. Demo version 2.0 came out later to show off the new textured ceilings and floor for the power PC. It also allowed for a larger viewing window. Interestingly, both of these demos have unique levels from the original game. Demo version 2.0 actually had its own secrets and unique enemy. There will be a bit more about these demos throughout the series. Both of these demos are available to download at the fan site pid.bungie.org. What documents are helpful to have when playing this game? Note that all of these documents are on the fan site pid.bungie.org. Huge shout out to Hamish Sinclair for putting this page together and keeping this page running all of these years. Send him an email or make a forum post demonstrating your appreciation. First off, there is the manual. Like a lot of older games, 
You have to actually read the manual in order to understand the story. Don't worry, this information will be covered in the next video. The PID manual also includes an ad for Minotaur with Bungie's famous slogan, Kill your enemies, kill your friends, enemies, kill your friends. Perhaps Pathways into Darkness will help us uncover the origin for this slogan. Speaking of Minotaur, I saw a post from 2002 where a Bungie employee by the name of Max Oberman mentioned an internet playable version of Minotaur. Next we have the official hymn book. This is basically a strategy guide, but it actually adds a bit of story to the game, including revealing the main character's name. Matt Sowell, a past Bungie employee who worked on Marathon, Myth, and Halo Combat Evolved, revealed some interesting information about early versions of the hymn book that you can find on pid.bungie.org under Pathways Hint Book, Raw and Uncensored. You can count on the strategies in this video series to go much farther in depth than the official hint book. Additionally, I created an annotated map poster to help me navigate through the game, and I plan to refer to it throughout the video series. You can find this poster on pid.bungie.org. There is also Hopper's annotated PID maps there also. Use whichever maps you like. Lastly, search around pid.bungie.org. There is tons of information on there, and you might even find stuff that won't appear in this video series. There is also the forums where a few members are still active and might be able to answer some of your questions. The next part of this video is going to be a little bit about the creation of the game Pathways in Darkness. The best source out there for the creation of Pathways into Darkness is from the Marathon Scrapbook, link in the description. I want to share with you a short snippet of the book. You should know that Alex Seropian and Jason Jones met and started creating video games while they were at the University of Chicago. The first game they released together was Minotaur The Labyrinth of Creed. Minotaur was a last man standing PvP game where players start with nothing and need to pick up equipment and spells. It occurs within a labyrinth. Originally, Bungie's plan was to make PID a 3D version of Minotaur. Now, here is the scrapbook. Jason dropped by Alex's apartment fairly regularly to shrink wrap copies of Minotaur and swipe some of Alexander's food. On one of these visits, Jason brought up a new project, a 3D first-person perspective blast fest with a handful of role-playing elements tossed in. Jason called it Pathways into Darkness. Alex knew a good thing when he saw it, and the two became partners to publish the title. Jason began to work on Pathways in earnest with the help of his friend Colin Brent, who did the artwork. Jason coded by the day on the Mac 2FX in his apartment. Colin would visit in the evening to work on the game's graphics. Jason wanted to create a compelling backstory for Pathways rather than simply dumping players in a dungeon and instructing them to blast their way out. Numerous scenarios were written and discarded until Jason came up with the alien race known as the Jaro and their ultimatum to humanity. Neutralize a Lovecraftian alien god buried in a pyramid, or suffer a hideous fate at his hands. Pathways pushed the technological envelope farther than any previous Macintosh game, offering a real-time, three-dimensional textured mapping. It's the closest thing you can get to virtual reality without a helmet, ran the advertising slogan, which is actually true if you ignore the fact that most virtual reality experiences do not include encounters with lurching pumpkin-colored obscenities sporting tongues the size of small dock. Alex and Jason harbored modest hopes for pathways. They thought it might sell enough copies to allow them the luxury of eating real food again. Pathways into Darkness shipped in August 1993 and met with immediate critical and popular acclaim, winning a trunk load of awards and establishing Bungie as a major entity in the Macintosh game market. The commercial of Pathways allowed Alex and Jason to move out of their Hyde apartment to a real office in Chicago's Pilsen neighborhood. Alex tried to maintain that homegrown atmosphere by picking an office without heat. The crack house, behind the building, 
provided Bungie with the name of their Office file server. More importantly, Bungie could now afford to hire additional programmers and artists for their next project, whatever that might be. Ryan Martell, halfway through a year-long break from Duke University, signed on as a programmer at the end of 1993 he began work with Jason on a new game co-named Marathon. Marathon was originally intended as a sequel to Pathways that addressed commercial complaints about speed, not enough, and challenge far too much. Jason divided his time between Marathon and another 3D project dubbed Mosaic. All that is known about Mosaic is that it had nothing to do with the web browser of the game name and that Jason is extremely reluctant to discuss it. While we know that Jason wanted to focus on the story, the reality is that the main motivation for PID was to take advantage of the newest Mac hardware. Alex Seropian revealed this in an AOL chat room with Bungie fans at the time. He also revealed that PID was written in C and Assembler, if you care about that. Tensor Denise has an article explaining a bit about how the real-time texture mapping within PID works. You can find this article in the link in the video. Tensor Denise worked for Inside Mac Gaming at the time, but will later work as a Bungie employee. Pathways into Darkness features some new technology at the time, including support for 256 colors, ability to play three sounds simultaneously, high resolution option, which was a high resolution at the time, shadow rendering, continuous motion and textured mapped in graphics, while most games had polygon graphics at the time, and auto mapping. Focusing a bit on Bungie's employees themselves, we can find all the people who worked on PID in the credits for the game within the manual. Jason Jones was the programmer and product designer for the game. Jason and Alex Seropian were the co-founders of Bungie. At the time the game was released, Jason was just 22 years old. Colin Brent developed the sprites and box art for PID. He left Bungie shortly after Marathon was started. Colin was kind enough to leave a couple of forum posts about his work on the game. You can pause the video and read them, or follow the links in the description. Phil Candela worked on the box art for the game. He also worked on the box art for Operation Desert Storm. There isn't much other information out there about him that I could find. Of those in the special thanks, there are just a few I have any information on. Greg Kirkpatrick is actually referenced within the actual game, we will get to that later. Greg worked with Bungie on Marathon and was heavily involved in the third Marathon game, Marathon Infinity. Thanks Greg for your work. Nick. Dick Credzenzo was also listed on the special thanks for Operation Desert Storm. Don't know anything else about him. Laura Federson is now Laura Seropian as she married Alex. She was also mentioned in the Operation Desert Storm manual. Dan Meltz worked on the official handbook for PID. Doug Zartman, who is not mentioned in the credits, joined Bungie as their first paid employee in May of 1994. He started out doing tech support for Pathways, but found his role expanding into public relations. He worked at Bungie for six years during the Marathon, Myth, and Oni days. There are several possible influences for the game. I think the most obvious influence would be Wolfenstein 3D. ID software was something else at the time. Another obvious influence for PID is Indiana Jones. The Last Crusade had come out in 1989. The idea of fighting Germans and collecting treasure is right in line with the movies. I have not played it, but there was a roguelike game called Scarab of Ra that came out in 1987 on the Mac. The game takes place within an Egyptian pyramid. There is also a 1983 arcade game called Lost Tomb where you shoot your way through a South American pyramid. The character picks up treasure as he goes. My guess is Bungie didn't even know about the arcade game, but it has enough similarities that it is a possibility. There is a book that came out in 1971 called Roadside Picnic by two Soviet Russian authors by the name of Arkady and Boris Stugatsky. I have not read it, but researched a little bit about it. 
In the book, there is an alien visitation to the planet Earth that led to the creation of zones that are areas where aliens may have landed. These zones exhibit strange supernatural phenomena and they contain artifacts with inexplainable properties. These zones could be protected by government agencies to help people from entering them. People who were called stalkers would enter these zones to steal these alien artifacts. There is a 1979 movie called Stalker that is loosely based on the book where three men enter the zone with one carrying an atomic bomb that he plans to use to destroy the artifacts within. As you will see, this has some similarities to the PID story in some regards. I watched the movie and wasn't a big fan of it, but there are a lot of people out there who consider this movie a classic, so it might be worth checking out if you want to delve more into the PID story. That is it for this video. In the next video, we will discuss the story for PID that you can find within the game manual. See you all then.